in your life you have all these switches on and there's these catastrophic events and it's never just one event that happens that you have all these other things that are turned on all these little switches just add up a little bit more slack on right you got it if it were my kids that were hanging from a rope on a cliff he'd definitely be the guy that i wanted there he's got the best knowledge most skills and he's a game time player he's the guy you want to have the football That's good. Prepare to haul. Let me get the shot of you. Haul slow. Get out of here, buddy. Just, uh, you ready? All right, haul slow. Inches. Slow. All right, so I'm going to fight You're you guys. You're approaching Come the on. edge. Stop. Nice. Time. Time. 18.08. What does it mean to go 100% into an aspect of rescue? It means pouring yourself into it. There's a lot that goes into drive and I feel like I'm a driven person. I had people tell me like, Micah, you're not a rope access guy. And I'd be like, well, what's the highest thing you can get rope access? Level three, so I'll go get it. Uh, Micah, you're not a, you know, you're not a backcountry mountain guide. You can't, what's the highest thing you can do? IFMJ, well, I'm gonna go get that. What's the highest rope rescue you can do? Tech three, I went and got that. And what I found was I could take pieces from all those industries and bring some of them over into another industry and it would kind of blow minds and it'd be like, hey, this piece of gear works better here and it still meets all your standards. The reason I started Peak Rescue is because I saw the cross-pollination of all these different certifications. I saw the value in it. I love figuring out a system, trying to clean it up, I guess, and then working through it and being like, that was a better way. And Peak Rescue's mission is we're gonna give you the best tools for the job for whatever your mission profile is. We're not just gonna take the standard, this is what always has to happen. We're gonna look at it and tear it apart and think, is there a better way to do it? And if there is a better way, why are we not doing that? You guys have any questions? All right, let's go, we got people dying, go. Micah Rush is Peak Rescue. I mean, they want to see Micah Rush, and so they want to talk to Micah Rush. They want Micah Rush to be in the class, to teach the class. And so I think there's a lot of expectations from him that even from like the clients, they want to talk, they want to see Micah Rush. How's it going? You all hooked up? It's going good. I'm just attaching my auxiliary straps. And then I'm going to do my main blade and just be ready to go. Okay. Prepare to raise! Ready on blade! Ready on blade! Roll one! And I think all the innovators in the world right now that I'm, I see out there, uh, they're doing that. They're not just taking the status quo, they're taking a piece of equipment and they're using it for five things when it was used for one. And we're saying, well, if we can stay within these parameters, we're going to do it, right? And so to me, when I look at a system, I start thinking of all these different gear that I can use for that. Okay, so slow up and stop. So when you get to the hole, make sure you have visual and make sure you're not catching anything. This thing, if it starts to get anything, I'm going to stop it. He's 20 steps ahead. And I think his ability to organize, that logistic ability to think of all those other little steps that get forgotten about, that ability to maybe step back and like get a big picture of the overall, the whole scene, the whole rescue, like what it's gonna take to, you know, from beginning to end. I mean, he thinks of every little minute detail, which is also a very good thing as far as uh, like helping us as instructors or helping clients in the class. And I'll share as much as I can. I don't. There's no knowledge hoarding for me. I'll give you as much as I can. And usually they tell me to stop it after a while. But I think that's how we're gonna progress in any industry, right? Whether it's climbing or rescue, we share knowledge and pass it on to the people coming up. And then we'll just progress way farther with it. Micah is gravity. He'll kind of suck you in. And once that happens, it kind of turns into that snowball rolling downhill. That's just kind of his life. You know, it's this snowball with giant momentum.
That was one of my personal goals this year, <laughs> was to beat Mike in all the physical tests. <laughs> And most people's goals were like, you know, be a better husband or be a better friend. Yeah. That wasn't my goal. <laughs> to beat Micah. He's one of the most popular people in town and maybe the state. And he's the type of guy who you go anywhere with in Salt Lake. We, we just climbed the Grand recently. You're walking up the Grand and everybody on the way down is saying, oh, hey, Micah, 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 Micah. You know, and so they're just absolutely, uh, <laughs> not just enamored by him, but you know, they just, everybody seems to know him. I've been with the Casper Fire Department for 14 years, going on 15 now. Um, I've been down at Station One here for 13 years of it. I felt like one of the big things I wanted to do, I found in my life, was I was only climbing or doing other things and I wanted to give back. It's cool to see somebody who's so busy with everything, has so many irons in the fire, is, is constantly trying to find time, not just for his family and his businesses, but himself, to take time out of his schedule to also make sure that other people are taken care of too. That's pretty inspirational. He's taken me under his wing for sure, with Peek in and the fire department, and I guess kind of in life, to be honest with you. You know, I've learned a lot from his philosophies as a dad and philosophies as just a human. He's a good human, you know. That's why we're up so early, huh? We had a tooth the whole house up, and now we've lost the tooth. Up, oh, buddy. Look. Boom. Nice. Yeah, we found it. Nice. All right. I always say he works hard to play hard, so whatever he's into, he's into a hundred percent. So if he's working hard, he's everything, he's all in. When he's being dad, he's all in, <laughs> and so there's no halfway with Micah. He is a hundred percent in. I've backed off, it, whether I like it or not, having kids is my risk tolerance has gone down. I'm trying to be smarter about things in rescues that uh, it would be pretty selfish if I got killed or died doing these things when I knew the risk I was taking. They called us. I was at the firehouse and it said, hey, there's been an explosion in the Gulf, international waters. Um, they have trapped people and um, two confirmed dead. Would you, re would, would you want to go to this? And my response was, yeah, instantly, yes. Thank you, traffic. This is Blue West one taking off from Hank. Going through the, uh, the Gulf operation was definitely unique. Mm -hmm. You know, the group of people that we had with us, we had over 100 years of rescue experience and had been on disasters from tsunamis, um, structural collapses, uh, hurricane scenarios all around the world. And this was a unique one, um, definitely a consensus from the group. It was upper echelon for all of us. I knew there was gonna be risk. I didn't realize how much risk there was gonna be until we were actually on board. We kind of did a survey just flying around it and we found out that the individuals were in this, uh, this forward leg and they were basically at the bottom below the water. Crazy thing, this whole thing was listing. Um, about 15 degrees, so it was offset, and it was hung up on a, a sandbar that was like 35 feet. And then there was this tugboat literally pulling on it so the current didn't turn it or flip it over. So you'd be on this thing, and you'd be working, and all of a sudden the whole thing would shift and start to move. So that we had failures in boats and, and cranes and all these things that were supposed to happen. We basically had as much gear as we could carry, so to speak, on one helicopter. And then we were pushed against a window with weather coming in, and and this thing being delayed anymore, and we didn't want to delay it any longer. Uh, we made, always made the joke um, while we were on the journey that I, I was going to go down and do the actual packaging and rescue with him. I was the only one that didn't have kids. I do get nervous for him, but also I know that there's no one else I would rather be around in any kind of emergency situation, he always finishes. Yeah, I would say he is probably one of the more qualified individuals in the country. We had never seen what we were actually going into. We essentially had to on-site the bottom two floors where the actual victims were. In those atmospheres, if you were to take off your breathing air, you would probably perish right away, if not very soon. I knew repelling into these areas, a hundred feet down, I'm looking up at these small holes that I'd come through, 
and I'm on a tank of air and there's nobody coming to get me is, yeah, I was puckered, there's no doubt, but um, I knew that we could get it done. Being safe and uh, knowing the complexities, I'm proud of it, I'm proud of the guys, I'm proud that we're safe, and I think we're all happy that we came home from it and we're ready to do it again. Um, we go all over the world together and it's been it's been awesome. This company, I want to bring a really good product and I want to go see the world with you guys and I, I want to look back when we're older and say, man, we helped a lot of people and we had a good time and it wasn't about money and it wasn't about this image. We just did the right thing for the right reasons. Yeah.